All right, so today we're going to be talking about some advanced SQL concepts. Um, so let's just jump right in. So let's suppose we got a requirement from the business where they want you to run a report or run a query that shows them the product ID, the amount sold at the stores, and the amount sold at e-com. Now let's suppose that your store sales and your e-com sales are in separate tables, okay? So let's take a look at these two tables here. Let's run this query. Okay, now we can see they have the pro each table has product ID, description, color, and quantity. Uh, but you can see some products ha they they have in common, like row one, product ID seven one one, is in both ecom and store. But these other products are exclusively sold either in store or in ecom. Okay, which means you're not going to find a matching record if you were to do an inner join um, on these two tables by product. So let's go. Ahead, but let's go ahead and see what that looks like anyway. So here we have a we are interjoining both of these tables on product ID. So let's run this, see what it looks like. And as you can see, as you might expect, um, you're only going to get matching records, product 711. So that's not going to work. So now let's left outer join these tables and see what that looks like. All right. So now as you can see, this didn't work either because now you only have matching records, right? Product ID 711 um, or all the records from the left table, the stores table, which is product ID 725 and 723. So that didn't work either. So what can we do in this case, right? In this situation, you'd want to use a full outer join. So let's change left to full, and let's rerun this. And now you can see we're looking much better. We have all the records from all the tables. But all right, let's finish our query here. I think we're getting closer. So let's type s dot product ID. Okay, let's also bring in our ecom product ID field. And now let's add s dot quantity as alias this as store quantity. And then e dot quantity as ecom quantity. Now let's run this. All right. So now we have our store quantity, our ecom quantity, and we don't want these nulls, so we can simply do is null comma zero, and we'll do the same thing over here, is null. So if this quantity is null, make it a zero. Now let's rerun this again. Okay, now we're looking a little better still, but we only want one product ID column. We don't want two, right? The business just wants one. So what do we do in this case, right? So the answer is, there's a function called coalesce, okay? And what this will do, we'll wrap these in coalesce, and we'll give it an alias as product ID. And what this will do is, this will take the first occurrence that is not empty, okay? So in the case where these are both populated, it'll just grab the first one from here, from the stores, right? But if the stores is null, it will look to this one, the ecom product ID, and if that's not null, we'll grab that. So now let's run this again and see what this looks like. And there you have it. These are the results we wanted. So now we've successfully used a full outer join with coalesce to get the business the report they wanted. All right, so now the next thing I want to show you guys is um, how to use a cross apply and an outer apply. Um, now, they're similar to inner and outer joins, and you can actually use them to join tables in that same way. Uh, where they really come in handy is when you're using functions, okay? So what we have here on the left here is this is a, is a function that returns rows, right? It returns records um, called get non-exclusive product info. And basically, it's just a function where you pass it the product ID, okay? And it will get, if it's a non-exclusive product, it will get you the additional attributes, Okay, and by non-exclusive, we mean a product that is sold in both the stores and e-com. Um, okay, so this is our original query with the full outer join. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to add a cross apply, okay, and then we're going to add our function here. We're going to add parentheses, and we're going to pass in this coalesce value here, right? This is going to be our parameter, right? So that's going to basically just pass the product ID. Okay, and we're going to give this an alias. We're going to name this um, NEX, non-exclusive. Okay, and then we're going to add here just NEX.star. So we're just going to return everything returned by the function. Okay, so let's take a look at what this does. 
So let's run this. Aha. Now you can see it only returned one product, that product 711. Okay? Now why is that? Well, if you remember from our first two queries, that is the only product that is non-exclusive. So that is the only product found in both e-com and our stores table. Okay? So that's basically like an inner join, right? It basically, by, by doing a cross apply, it inner joined to this function and only pulled matching records, okay? So now let's change this to an outer apply, okay? And then let's see what this looks like. Let's run this, aha. And now we got everything, right? So here's our additional attributes over to the right. So you can see it only populated for the, the non-exclusive item, that product ID 711, and where it didn't find any matching rows, it would just return nulls. So this is similar to an outer join. All right, so now the next thing I wanna show you guys is how to use the intersect keyword, okay? So now suppose we only, we have this query here from our store sales table, select product and product description, right? So this gives us all the products in our store sales table. But suppose we only wanted to choose products that were also sold in our e-com table, right? Also found in our e-com table. So let's go ahead and type the word intersect down here. And then let's write another query. Now the columns have to match in this case, okay? So we'll copy and paste that. And we'll select from the e-com sales by product, okay? So now let's run this and see what happens. Aha, and as you can see, it extracted anything that wasn't also found in our e-com sales table. Now, another thing you can do here, let's say we wanted the opposite. Let's say we didn't want any e-com products from our query, okay? We can change intersect to accept, and now when we run this, we'll get everything but product 711, okay? So that took everything that wasn't found in our e-com table, okay? So that's... Um, intersect and accept. All right, so now the last thing I want to show you is how to do a pivot. All right, so but we're going to start with a simple query here. We just want to count um, the number of our products in, in, or in, e or in each category, right? So here we're just selecting the category, count of products, and we're just joining our product table to our category table. That's it. And we're grouping by product. That's it. So simple query here. These are results. Um, but let's suppose we want to, we don't want this as rows, right? Let's suppose we want our, each of our categories to be a column, right? So we kind of want to transpose the rows to the columns, okay? So how would you do this, right? So the answer is you'd use a pivot. So let's see how this works. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my join condition here, uh, just so I don't have to retype it. And then we're gonna come over to a new query window and we're gonna do, we're gonna select paste my join condition, but we're going to want to select our products and categories, okay? So we will select our P dot product ID and C dot name, and we'll name that as category. Okay, so now let's run this. Okay, so now you can see it just selects a list of our products and their categories. So all our products and all our categories. That's all this does. Okay, but now we're gonna wrap this in another select, okay? So this is gonna be a derive, like act like a derived table basically is what it's called, okay? So we'll wrap this in parentheses and we'll do select star from, okay? Now we'll alias this subquery, okay, as T space We'll use, the T, we'll use the keyword pivot, and then we'll open another parentheses, and what do we want to do? What do we want our values to be? Well, we want them to be a count of products. So we'll count products here, and then we'll do four for category, right? So we want to count the products for each category, and then we'll type in now we'll open another parentheses here, and this is where we have to list each category out. So this is how we're gonna turn our rows into columns. So to do, but to do that, you have to enter the actual values. Okay, so within brackets. So we'll enter brackets here, and now we'll just cut and paste our values. So we know components is one, cat, one column we're gonna want. Let's scroll down here. We know bikes, it's another column we're gonna need. That's another category. Accessories, there it is. That's another one. 
and finally clothing. Okay, now we'll close parentheses, close them again, and we'll alias this as count of products. Okay, and now let's run that. And there you have it. So now you can see we've turned our rows into columns. But now let's break this query down for a second here just to make sure you understand it, okay? So what this first query is doing here, this is feeding our pivot statement over here, okay? So it's counting the products from this query for each category in this query where, the, where these are found, okay? And it's applying this count of products to each of these categories, okay? And then we're just selecting everything from there, okay? All right, so that'll do it. Thank you for watching.